green. In today's show, Harold's fly gets stuck while mine gets crushed. And we're going to show you how easy it is to do your own plumbing. Well, they say what goes around comes around. Well, here's a man who's been around without ever buying around. My uncle, the star of the Red Green Show, Mr. Red Green. Thank you very much. Thanks for tuning us in. Real exciting week up here at Possum Lodge. Maybe some of you already noticed uh, we got Harold here on casters. <laughs> Why am I wearing these again? Well, Harold, I just told you five minutes ago. Yeah, I know, but I forgot because I was staring at that piece of food in your teeth. You, no, you go for it now and I'll cover you. Set, go. <laughs> nope, missed it. <laughs> well, Harold wasn't listening, but there is a reason we got him on wheels. They've got a big event going on up here. Some kind of sporting event, right? Yeah, like something about to do with the Olympics? Yeah, that's right, Harold. I remember now because all the, all, the, uh, all the different Possum Lodge members from all over North America, all the different chapters, they gather here for the biannual Possum Olympics. Yeah, see, you do remember. Uh, and, then, and, and they have all these different weird events. You're talking about all the different weird events, like the, uh, the dessert tray weightlifting, I remember that one, and, the, and then there was the 40-man Volkswagen bobsled race. <laughs> yeah, Harold, that's it. Uh, and, then, then, and then I said to you, well, how come I have to wear rollerblades? You said, well, you're wearing rollerblades for the, for the shirt sailing. And I said, well, what shirt sailing? And you said, well, shirt sailing, Harold, is when you put on a great big uh, shirt and you hold out the, 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 the sides of it there and you let the wind catch it, and then you go down the hill like that, Harold. <laughs> and the wind would catch me and I'd go fly down the hill. And I said, well, what kind of sport is that? And you said, shut up, Harold. Shut up, Harold! <laughs> shut up, you shut up. <laughs> I remember all that now. I remember now. <laughs> what did you want again, Mo? Well, Harold, I just wanted you to come over here for a minute. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Oh, okay. And up the river as fast as we can go. Three fat guys in a stolen canoe. Row your parkers, row. Paddling up the river with a police boat in pursuit. We're still going up the river, but now it's in a van with bars on the windows and virtually no creature comforts. <laughs> This week on uh, Handyman Corner, we're going to get uh, up close and personal about your plumbing. Or I should say your house is plumbing. You know, uh, the word plumbing actually comes from the ancient uh, Roman uh, word for lead, which was plumbum, which was actually uh, Harold's nickname for a while. <laughs> and now, of course, uh, the ancient Romans, they used lead for all their water pipes. Uh, they're all dead now. <laughs> now, there's, uh, there's two sides to plumbing, really. There's a supply and demand, or uh, drainage, drainage. Now, the drainage side, you got the big pipes there, and you got holes in the ground, and you got you know what, you know? And I'll tell you something, paying 50 bucks to a professional to handle that is well worth every penny. <laughs> but now the supply side, that's a different kettle of fish entirely. It's so darn easy, an idiot can do it, and I can prove it. <laughs> so what you want to start with is uh, copper pipe, not lead, and uh, you can get it any length, but we kind of like, uh, we kind of like the 12-foot lengths, because uh, we get it in the 12-footers, because, um, We get it in the we get it in the twelve foots because we just find that it with the twelve footers. Uh, it's just easier to work with. Okay, so uh, once you've got your copper pipe, uh, what you want is to get some uh, fittings so that you can go around joists and beams and maybe pictures or whatever it is that you just don't feel like moving. <laughs> so you got your various kinds of fittings here. You got your 45 degree elbow. You got your 90 degree, which come in left and right. Of course, they don't mark them, you know. So what I do is I just, I buy them by the box and they generally work out around 50-50. <laughs> and then you got this unit here, which uh, I guess would be 180 degree elbow. And uh, this one, which goes right on the end of the pipe, which is a 360. <laughs> and then uh, you got your T-joiner for joining two pipes to one. And you got your Y-joiner for any of you who have not yet joined the Y. <laughs> A little plumbing humor there. All right, once you've got your pipe cut up into the various lengths that you need, you get them all together and uh, 
you gotta rough up the ends of the pipe so that the solder will uh, stick to them. This almost looks like something that Zamfir would play, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, when it comes to uh, roughing up the pipes, uh, there's an easy way to do that, uh, using the belt sander. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> okay, now we can assemble the piping. Uh, we take the elbows and uh, fill them up with grease. Not elbow grease, but this other stuff, it's called flux. And you stick it right on there. Uh, this is gonna probably take me a little while to put together, so uh, why don't we get on with the show, and when I'm done, we'll come right back. Once again, it's that time of the show where we expose those three little words that men find so difficult to say. I don't know. <laughs> And here to prove that point this one more time is my Uncle Red and, of course, Mr. Dougie Franklin. <laughs> well, this will be interesting. We have a letter from Texas this week. United States. Oh, excellent. Okay. Dear experts, last year, the missus and I vacationed in England. It was a real cute little country. But even though they spoke kind of like Americans, the place was like a real foreign country or something. When I ordered a bag of chips, I got fries. Everyone drove on the wrong side of the road, and their money looked real weird. This year, we're going to come up to Canada and visit you people. Is it weird there, too? <laughs> I think by weird, he means different. Well, that makes you different, then, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't think there's any difference between Canadians and Americans. Doug, you're an American. Wouldn't you say we're about the same? No, sure I wouldn't. You Canadians are weird. <laughs> How's that? Well, I mean, you know, up here, a 240Z is a 240Z. What is a Z? I mean, you know, it sounds like something off Hee Haw. Lucky up on the porch, it's Uncle Z. <laughs> Ah, what's in a name, Dougie? It doesn't matter Z or Z, because the same car goes just as fast and gets the same gas mileage up here. Oh, no, sure it doesn't. <laughs> you go 100 kilometers an hour, you get maybe, what do you say, uh, 10 uh, kilometers to the liter. Now, I don't know whether that's good or bad. <laughs> I don't know whether anybody who was born here knows either. <laughs> Okay, all righty, but, you know, we, we're really going the same speeds, and, you know, we drive on the same side of the highway as Americans. No, sir, you don't. <laughs> oh, you Canadians, you all drive in the passing lane. <laughs> now, in the United States of America, we got your driving lane, we got your passing lane. Up here, you just got, like, lanes. It's like bowling. Just go anywhere that, you know, happens to be open and there you are you try that in the u.s of a you come face to face with the cops well you'd have the same problem up here doug absolutely not no no sir you wouldn't you'd get pulled over by your mounties and of course you know look at the way those fellers are dressed <laughs> they're like security guards now back home we got state troopers they're gussied up with gold braid. They got your big guns, 10-gallon hats. You ever been pulled over by a Mountie wearing a 40-liter hat? <laughs> Telling you, you Canadians are different than us Americans. Cats out of the bag. <laughs> well, perhaps it's just because we're more tolerant and we're less likely to, to judge foreigners and we're, and we're like a little less closed-minded about different cultures. No, sir. <laughs> no, sir, you're just, uh, that's one thing actually we have in common. You're just as narrow-minded as uh, we are, only we're upfront about it, you know. <laughs> when you talk to an American like this, he's just gonna be just as ticked off as you are, but he'll let you know instead of hiding behind, you know, some kind of constipated smile making like... <laughs> Thinking like none of this is bugging him. Well, uh, <laughs> thanks so much for dropping by, Doug. <laughs> Great having you here. Yep, yep. Very informative. Excellent. Yes. Weird. <laughs> it is spring. I walk through the woods. I feel like I did when I was 15. I walk into a beehive. My face gets stung a hundred times. 
Now I look like I did when I was 15. <laughs> All right, so now you've got your pipe set running from your inlet out to, say, your bathroom or over to your kitchen and up into the laundry room and out into the lawn sprinkler, maybe into your bidet and then uh, out into the spittoon. And once you've got all your joints set like that, you got to now make them real solid by using uh, some sort of a soldering device like this uh, soldering torch. Now, I know some people are nervous about using these torches. Uh, but uh, the truth is that they're of absolutely no danger at all uh, for using them around the house as long as you remember to to turn them off, you know. I'm gonna put my matches here. Uh, I know the professionals use the big, the big 20 pounders, uh, but to be honest with you, oh, here we are. To be honest with you, I don't trust those big the propane tanks, you know, I think, I think those darn things could explode on you. <laughs> All right, now, uh, you might want to have a second uh, propane torch around, just as more or less a backup. And uh, then you just uh, heat up the joints until all the flux starts boiling in there, and then just put the solder on there, and she'll just, she'll just melt right in there. Just, just that easy, really. Harold, do you want to come in here and light this torch? <laughs> <laughs> and there we go. She's ready to rip. All right, Harold, uh, turn the water on there. Oh, 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 hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. There, that's got her that time. We got her, we got her, Harold. Let her rip, let her go. Hold it, hold it. You have to turn it on so hard, Harold. <laughs> All right, that looks better. We got her. All right, Harold, turn her on gently. Perfect. And that's all there is to it. So until next time, remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. <laughs> Try turning the water on here. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Harold, Harold, Harold! <laughs> Buzz! Yo, Red Man! How's it going? Not bad. Getting all ready for the possible Olympic opening ceremonies, oh, are you? Man, I'm getting ready for the big fly past. I'm going to tie this banner to my plane. Check oh, yeah. this out. Yeah. yeah. It says, to the victor... Go Ah, oh, man, I hate that. Look at that, eight minutes of work right down the drain. Oh, boy. <laughs> Anyways, it says, to the victor goes the spoils and the beer. <laughs> ah, oh. I probably should have waited for the paint to dry, right, before I folded it up? Yeah. Oh, well. You know what I'll do? No. I'll paint this on a sheet of plywood and fly it behind me. That'll be safe. Oh, yeah. Be hey, and yeah. check this out. Yeah. When I fly past the grandstand, yeah. right, yeah. I lean out the door. Yeah. You want me to whip out the balloons then, yeah. right? Yeah, the, the, they're filled with helium, right? Yeah. No, I couldn't get helium. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> so I filled them full of water. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Harold, this is the coolest. Check this out. Water bombs, catch. Oh, that's funny. Normally, they're supposed to break. Listen, I'm sure they'll break at 2,000 feet, right? Because... Oh, yeah, yeah. It'll be fabulous. Yeah, it'll be fabulous. And I got a plane full of streamers, right? Uh, yeah. And I got all this stuff, too. What's this stuff called? Confetti. Confetti, yeah! It'll yeah. be great! Yeah. Listen, I gotta go, right? Practice my demonstration sport. Air hockey! Oh, yeah, air. Oh, I know. I know the one. It's got the table and the, the air comes up and you shoot those little things around on there. Oh, man, not that. No. Ice hockey, you play on ice. Yeah. Field hockey, you play on a field. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Air hockey, yeah. Red, is played in the air. How does that work? Well, it's sort of like polo, right? Yeah. But instead of riding a horse and hitting a ball, yeah. you fly around in a plane and you try and hit... The Zeppelin! Wow. <laughs> Sherwood's got the Zeppelin! He shoots! He scores! <laughs>
you just hold on and you wait and see. Because I'm going to float like a butterfly and stink like a bee. That's sting, Harold, not stink. It is? Yeah. I better get another category then. Well, anyway, uh, we're all geared up here. Old man Sedgwick has cleaned out the barbecue so we can light the torch with it. And then for the opening ceremonies, of course, Stinky Peterson is doing his big number with the three ripe cabbages and the ice cream scoop. That's always a crowd pleaser. And for the closer, Moose Thompson got us a water cannon. But to sack Uncle Red, you're missing the true spirit of the Olympics, though. Oh, I don't know, Harold. We've already had five countries boycott us. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the modern true spirit, marketing and licensing. <laughs> Think about that, huh? We, can, we, need like a, we need an official soft drink and an official film and, and maybe an official airline. Oh, yeah. Well, we've got an official possum van and got an official outhouse. <laughs> we can name an official tree. No, 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 you're missing it. You see, we need like a logo maybe and a little um, cartoon character of an animal that we can market to death, you know? <laughs> Well, what kind of a cute little character could we have for Possum Lodge at the Possum Olympics? <laughs> Time once again for Adventures with Bill. Didn't know what Bill had in mind this week. Oh, oh it's horseshoes. Oh, that's, that's not so bad. I understand that horseshoes is one of the safest sports ever devised by man. As far as I know, no one's ever been injured uh, from horseshoes. <laughs> Might be one or two exceptions, I suppose. <laughs> or, or three or four. Anyway, the first step is to put the uh, steel rod. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not going to comment on that. Uh, but he has another, hopefully, another uh, stronger rod there. Yep, yep, yep. And he wants me to hold that. This is, I got to look away. This is a little bit too, and uh, I'm not going to. I didn't, I didn't really feel him hit the thing. I didn't know quite what was going on, and uh, I just, oh. I did hear something, though, and then why would he be lying down? Oh, well. So he taped the head back on that, and I taped the head back on that, and uh, then we could try again. So I uh, got the thing lined up, just give her a little. You know, the sinkholes around the lodge are real handy sometimes. But that seemed, uh, I thought that, oh, boy. This is a dangerous sport, isn't it, Bill? Oh. Yeah, I think it is, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I thought that, that uh, with that uh, pole being so low in the ground, you know, I don't know, I think that's more dangerous. Now, how are you going to be able to catch the thing? You know, won't it go right over like that, into that? <laughs> Wouldn't that happen, Bill? That doesn't seem to bother him too much. It wasn't his van. So then he starts just kind of firing him, and then we had kind of a gang shoot here. Oh, my gosh. And, uh... Hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't know quite how to score those. I was not real pleased with Bill. That was all my stuff. He's, he's relax, relax, relax. You go get the horseshoes. He's got an idea. What he's going to do now, take that rake and stick it on there, and he's going to duct tape that to the little pole. Now he's got a great big pole to shoot at. Yeah, that's, that seems a little, a little more sensible, but... Just in case, he's gonna back up just, yeah, yeah, it's, it's take some of the danger out of the sport. And he throws a whole bunch of what's there, and oh, they're coming in like the B-49 bomber. And down goes the pole, and then up she comes. Fires him right back towards Bill, and there's, oh boy, one, two, and three. By golly, that's a ringer. Yeah, Bill, you're a ringer, three points. <laughs> this is for all the young people, which means I don't have to watch it. Well, it's time to get up and get down and shake your booty and dance till you drop and then get back up again. <laughs> Dancing has been called making love while standing up. <laughs> Which I guess that's why my dad's favorite song is the Minute Waltz. <laughs> All right, well, anyway, dancing is a lot more than just going... <laughs> First, you need music. Yeah, just like that. But you gotta start slow, you know? Just let one foot do some of the work. There you go, Mr. One Foot. Let him feel it a little while. He'll tell the rest of the body. He's mentioning it to the leg now. There you go. Everyone's starting to feel it in the whole body. Let the rhythm flow. There 
you go. Mr. Shoulder heard all about it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Help! Hopefully he'll dance all the way out into the bug zapper. <laughs> we all live for the good days, don't we? <laughs> but Harold's got these uh, contracts he's doing up, and we just want to make sure, you know, that the I's are crossed and the T's are dotted. Well, I'm not so good at the fine print anymore, Red, you see? My eyesight's gotten so bad I can barely see my hand in front of my face. <laughs> What did I do? Uh, looks like a shrub of some kind. They're tough to clean, aren't they, Reg? <laughs> well, the dream is dead. The Paws Olympics have been canceled. Canceled before the spray paint was even dry on the gold, silver, and bronze medals. <laughs> canceled? Oh, you can't cancel, Uncle Red. I just signed a multi-dollar television deal. <laughs> oh, we got, like, prime time on cable 10, midnight to 3 every night. Well, I'm sorry, Harold, but every athlete was caught taking a performance-enhancing substance. Oh. Beer. <laughs> Beer? Beer doesn't en enhance your performance. Oh, Harold, you sound just like my wife. <laughs> Beer enhances an athlete's performance in his own mind, Harold. They think they can jump higher, run faster, and throw up farther. <laughs> All they do is fall down and hurt themselves. Yeah, but Uncle Red, look, I, I just designed a, a, a POS Olympic logo. Watch. <laughs> and and, and there's a, of course, there's a POS Olympic model. Be the very best you can be. Considering. <laughs> Oh, that's a squeal of the possum. You got a meeting now. Why, yeah, well, you go on down and fan the Olympic claims, Harold. And I'll be down in a minute, okay? Okie dokie. Well, this is probably the only sporting event in history where you can say there are no winners and no losers here today and mean it. Except for the part about the losers. <laughs> anyway, if my wife is watching, uh, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting and I am no longer in training, which means uh, I can relax, so to speak. <laughs> Tonight, I'd like to go for the goal. <laughs> That's code. <laughs> and to the rest of you, on behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Possible Lodge, thank you so much for watching, and keep your stick on the ice. Olympic paraphernalia is uh, available at cost through any of the members or whatever trustees are appointed by the receiver. <laughs>